you're you're doing great okay. please go ahead great uh, so thank you uh, i'm pierre from manchester and uh, with my colleagues antonio and Binoy, we wrote this position paper about isolation in unikernels so uh, in a lot of situations in the cloud uh, you will rent a virtual machine just for executing a single operation and this is very suboptimal uh, because you know, there is a lot of software in this Linux distribution that you are running, uh, a lot of software that is not needed. Um, there is also, you are probably making use of only a small subset of this uh, uh, very big monolithic Linux kernel that is running. So there is a lot of software bloat. And uh, one solution to that problem is uh, using a unikernel. So with a unikernel, you will compile uh, your application sources with just uh, the necessary libraries and a very small library operating system into something that is a single binary and it is able to run uh, as a guest operating system on top of a hypervisor. So this is a definition of a unikernel. And uh, so in, uh, in a unikernel environment, we run one application per unikernel, so one application per virtual machine. Uh, it's a single process virtual machine and uh, it's a single address space virtual machine, which means that uh, the, the kernel and the application, they share a single address space. And in a unikernel, that address space is unprotected, which means that uh, both the kernel and also the application execute in ring zero. So this model gives us plenty of benefits. Uh, it's very lightweight. So uh, the boot times are very fast. Uh, the memory footprint are very low compared to a traditional virtual machine. Uh, it's pretty secure because there is a very strong isolation between two unikernels, they are virtual machine. And there are also some nice performance benefits. For example, because everything runs in ring zero, uh, system calls are actually just common function calls. So the latency is, uh, is very low. Uh, so with all these benefits, we have plenty of application domains. Now, um, as I said, the isolation between two unikernel instances running on the same host is strong. But the fact that there is no isolation within a unikernel instance is actually quite concerning in many scenarios. Uh, so, as we all know, uh, now modern applications, they need to be decomposed into uh, multiple components. Uh, because, for example, in my web server, I could have some uh, uh, cryptographic keys that uh, may need to be protected from some code that is less trusted, for example, the parser. Now, in a unikernel, we cannot do that because there is no user versus kernel separation. So the, the library operating system kernel cannot enforce any type of isolation uh, in the user space because there is no user space. Uh, there is also all these nice unikernels that have been written in memory safe languages. So it gives them very nice uh, security properties. But the thing is, uh, they all rely on a, a sometimes significant part of unsafe code. So it can be C code to implement, for example, the OCaml runtime that goes with the Mirage OS unikernel. And uh, some Rust unikernel have been written too, and they contain unsafe code. So, uh, there may be a need for a, a kernel level separation to between safe and unsafe code. So uh, at least we need these two types of separation uh, inside a unikernel instance. Now uh, we, we observe that the fact that there is a single address space uh, from this fact, uh, there are a lot of uh, benefits that derive from this fact. So we would like to keep this feature while bringing more isolation inside unikernels. So in this posi position paper, we look at two uh, recent technologies that are uh, Intel MPK and hardware capabilities. Um, so what is MPK? So MPK provides you uh, memory protection within an address space. So very, very briefly, the way it works is that we have, uh, we can tag virtual memory pages with one of the 16 available protection keys in the page table entries. And uh, for each core of the CPU, we have a private register, which is named the PKRU, and it contains per key uh, pro uh, permission access rights uh, for the, the thread that is currently running. And the cool thing with MPK is that uh, switching between security domains on a core is extremely fast. 
uh, it corresponds just to update the PKRU with a new value. There is no uh, invalidation in the TLB, uh, and it can be done in uh, just a few cycles. So it's really perfect for unikernels. Uh, so uh, we worked on a, a Rust-based uh, unikernel, which is called Rusty Hermit, and we implemented uh, different strategies of isolation. And in particular, we looked at uh, separating user from kernel space using Intel MPK. And uh, on the right side of the slide, you can see uh, the system call latency uh, in both Rust and C for uh, the isolated unikernel, which is the one uh, using MPK compared to a traditional Linux uh, system call latency. And uh, we are able to maintain it quite, uh, quite low, this latency compared to, to Linux. Uh, now, there are some limitations with this technology and the, the most important one is the limited number of protection keys, uh, only 16. So this really forces us to uh, have a, quite a coarse grain isolation model. We cannot have uh, a lot of security uh, domains within a unikernel. Now, if we look at the uh, hardware capabilities, so it's a very vast topic. And uh, the most important thing we are interested in here uh, with hardware capabilities is uh, that they are able to uh, create an environment in which uh, within a single address space, we can have a lot of uh, security domains with a very fine granularity, sorry. So at, at the byte level, we can provide memory protection. So it's really compelling for unikernels too. Uh, and, and this gives us some uh, ideas of uh, isolation models. So one idea could be this. So we could uh, isolate within the unikernel uh, library operating system on a pair subsystem way. So this is not unlike a microkernel or multi-server OS in terms of isolation, but we keep things within the, the same address space. So you know, hopefully we wouldn't get uh, the performance issue that comes with, uh, with RPCs. Uh, another model would be the vertical isolation. So we can uh, protect execution flows inside the unikernel libOS uh, that are made on behalf of user components that are not necessarily trusting each other. Uh, and a third model, uh, which is by the way not incompatible from, from with the other one, is a horizontal isolation. Uh, in this model, we can protect multiple stages of uh, the same execution flow, for example, IO uh, processing, we can protect, isolate them from each other. So these are you know, just a few ideas uh, we propose in the paper. Uh, in terms of issues with uh, hardware capabilities, it's an emerging topic. So it's quite, quite unclear how the performance would be uh, if we were to add a CPU with, uh, let's say, mature support for hardware capabilities. Uh, the memory footprint could be an issue too, because uh, hardware capabilities they rely on a uh, fat pointer. So with Shari, for example, they have pointers whose size is 256 bits, which is quite big. And it kind of goes against uh, the, the goal of unikernels to, to provide a very low memory footprint. And that's it. So uh, to, to summarize, uh, maybe the unikernel model could evolve to bring uh, the notion of isolation within a unikernel instance, but it would be good to keep the nice unikernel benefits such as light whiteness and fast system calls. Uh, and in order to do so, we propose of two uh, uh, emerging slash modern ISA extensions that are Intel MPK and hardware capabilities. And uh, that's it. Yes, so thank you very much for your attention and I'm ready to take any question. So oh, thank you very much. much. Uh, yeah, all right. So uh, we have a few minutes for quick questions, anyone? So uh, I remind you to raise the hand if you have any question. All right, so I, I think I, I, will, I will just ask one small question. Uh, you mentioned that uh, uh, MPK indeed has this uh, security limitation because this was never actually meant to be a secure infrastructure. Uh, it was meant to be, um, you know, it was meant to be used for uh, avoiding uh, reliability errors or this kind of uh, pointer overflows. 
So how do you actually see uh, this, uh, uh, your, your unikernel use this, uh, using this uh, MPK? Like, uh, how, why, why do you think it would be applicable here? So, I mean, we, we actually did it. Uh, so that's, uh, you know, that's from the paper we, we published at, uh, at VE, mm -hmm. uh, in which we, we used uh, MPK to protect uh, two things. Uh, one is, uh, you know, isolate the, the kernel space from the user space. Mm -hmm. And the second thing that I, you know, didn't talk about because of time reason is to isolate uh, kernel components from each other. Uh, the, the kernel is written in Rust. So, you know, in Rust, you have this um, unsafe part of the code uh, mm -hmm. that are used to implement low level operations that, you know, you cannot avoid in an operating system. For example, doing a context switch or uh, installing a page table, and, and this needs to be done in unsafe uh, Rust code. So uh, we isolated this specific part from the rest of the system with the assumption that, you know, they are easy to target for an attacker because they are not protected by the, the compiler checks that Rust is doing. Um, so it's... Uh, so, so the performance are okay. So we are still, for example, in terms of system call, we, we still have a lower latency compared to Linux. Uh, there are some security issues. It's not a panacea at all, for sure. Uh, one of the security issues being uh, the fact that 